Lauren Day with that report. Nobody was more surprised than Hannah Gadsby herself when her swan song in stand-up comedy, the show Nanette, turned out to be a massive global sensation. The show is a meticulous dissection, equal parts funny and devastating, of Gadsby's life as a gay woman and comedian. She explains the way coming up with punchlines has forced her to downplay some very painful episodes in her life. In the show, Gadsby announced she was done with stand-up, tired of the cost of mining her personal life for laughs. But as the comedian tells 7.30 exclusively tonight, she was lying. People think that I'm a bit casual, and because I'm a bit casual, they think that I don't suffer from nerves. This is incorrect. I am appropriately nervous. After a decade of doing stand-up, comedian Hannah Gadsby had planned to call it quits and return home to a simpler life in Tasmania. But the success of her show, Nanette, led to international acclaim, including being picked up by Netflix in 2018. My grandma asked me if I had a boyfriend. <laughs> and I realised in that moment that I'd quite forgotten <laughs> to come out to grandma. Her star is seriously on the rise in the US. For somebody like me, and uh, a nobody from nowhere gets this sweet gig. Free suit, new boots. Uh, just cos I don't like men. Hannah Gadsby, international sensation, Emmy Awards presenter, star of a hit Netflix special, Toast of New York. You realise you're probably at the stage now where you can have a really obnoxious rider, you know, a litter of fluffy white kittens or something like that. Yeah, I'm really thinking about it as well. And I'm really disappointed in myself for how simple my needs are. What do you ask for? Tea. And it's just... In, in the US, that's not cool. Well, that probably makes you high maintenance in the US. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, because it's, tea here is not tea. It's the ghost of tea. When we last spoke, Nanette was already very successful, but since then it's gone on to an even more stratospheric level of international success and acclaim. What's riding that wave been like? Um, it, it was disorientating at best. Um, it's it's quite difficult to be a you know unassuming sort of person um, and be in a very assuming position. So it's it's sort of a you know I'm I'm trying to be humble um, and I'm finding it easier to just hide. So I've been spending a lot of time on my own, not networking which is a real waste of my moment. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's been a lot. Is it now just constant demands on you all the time? Look, I've learnt to really use the word no a lot. Um, so I've been, you know, asked to do things that I would have once, you know, jumped at the chance of doing. And it's really kind of hard, you know, to strike that balance. I am experiencing this incredible success, but it came at such a price. You know, it, it wasn't it it wasn't fun to do. So it's sort of you know I'm trying to enjoy it, and then I think about what I did, and I go, ooh, I need a nap. When we last spoke, we talked about the way that turning awful things that had happened to you into something to make people laugh had come at a painful personal cost. As you just said, success itself comes at a cost. You also spoke about growing up as a young gay person and being taught to hate yourself and to think that you were less. Does success and being lauded so broadly make those feelings go away? Um, I think on a sort of um, a very personal level, yes. But in the moment we're living through it right now with such, you know, divisions and very vocal oppositions, um, particularly in the US, um, this, you know, it does feel like I've, I've, you know, stepped onto a moment that's still really hot. Like people, there's a lot of hate about and I'm acutely aware of it. With Nanette, you said that it was going to be your last stand-up show. Are you sticking to that? No, I lied. I think I lied. No, look, that was, <laughs> um, I, it's a complicated, it was a complicated statement. What else am I going to do? I'm, I'm profoundly skillless um, and 
you know, I've got a lot to say now. I feel like with um, with Nanette, I found my voice. Um, but, you know, I may as well use it now that I've found it. Is there a new show imminent? Oh, yes. I think that's why I'm here. I forgot about that. I'm promoting my tour, aren't I? And you were edging toward it, and I forgot to mention it. I just sent you a nice underarm bowl there to help you out. Yeah, and I just... Let, I was totally David Boone there, wasn't I? Just threw, nah, just uh, padding out the opening. That's a real cricket reference that came from nowhere. You should have just ignored what I asked right from the opening question and said, hey, nice to talk to you. Guess what? I've got a new show. I've written a new show. OK, well, let me ask you a left field question that you really will not be expecting. Hannah, what's the new show about? Oh, thanks for asking. Um... <laughs> The new show, well, it's pretty much about my inability to, you know, really operate in the world. Um, the, the show is is going to pick up in a way where Nanette left off. I don't need to talk about my own traumas on stage anymore. Um, but it is looking at stories um, with with an outward an outward view. So I'm, I'm, I'm using a little bit more art history, having a chat. I'll probably talk about my dog a lot. It's named after my dog, Douglas. Um, so there's a, I think that's what's on my mind. You're premiering it in Melbourne. Why is that, given that any city in the world would be clamouring to have this? I feel like I really, you know, cut my teeth in Melbourne as far as my, my stand-up comedy is concerned, you know. It felt like a really nice, for myself, like a really nice way of starting off a new a new chapter in my stand-up career um, and also my dogs are there and I really just really need to pat them. Well I hope you get to pat those doggies soon thank you for making time to speak to us. <laughs> Ask all the tough questions. That's the program tonight thanks for your company good night.